Good morning, Greater Zion and friends. This is a day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We've come to worship our God in the beauty of holiness to celebrate God for his loving kindness and his tender mercies. The psalmist said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Today is a mighty good day to praise the Lord. This morning started me on my way. Gave me a brand new dawning. Gave me a brand new day. It's a mighty good day, yes. It's a mighty good day, yes. It's a mighty good day to praise the Lord. He woke me up this morning. Started me on. Savior Jesus Christ. Father God, we come bow this morning to say thank you. Thank we you. thank you, O oh Heavenly Father, for another day, one that we have never seen before, and after this day that we'll never see again. Heavenly Father, we come thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us, O oh Heavenly Father. Yes. We thank you for watching over us last night, Lord, while we slumbered and slept in the mere image of death. But it was your finger of love, O oh Heavenly Father, that woke us up. And we say good morning, Lord. Thank you for another day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our reasonable health, portion of health and strength, O oh Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our jobs, our income, our families, Lord. Lord, we thank you for our church family, Heavenly Father. We thank you for greater Zion. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being good and for being so kind to us. Lord, you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And for that we say, Thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our pastor this morning. Thank you for Pastor L. David Poncho, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being a bomb in Gilead, oh Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, we know that you're able to cure us and heal us from all sickness and diseases, oh Heavenly Father. And we need you right now, oh Heavenly Father. Right now like never before, Lord. Touch this world, oh Heavenly Father. Touch each family that's lost family members, oh Heavenly Father. Touch those who are in the hospitals right now, Lord. We all need you, oh Heavenly Father. Some of us need you for one thing, and some of us need you for another. But one thing's for certain is that we all need you, and we just can't get along without you. Heavenly Father, we come thanking you for this service today. We come praying that something will be done, that something will be said, that some man, woman, boy, or girl will come running saying, what must I do to be saved? Heavenly Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord. Ooh, hear our prayer, O oh Lord. 
reina So good see, so good see, you're gonna read just what you saw. Beyond the mountain, on the mountain, down in the valley, down in the valley, you're gonna read just what you saw. So good see, so good see, you gonna read just what you saw. Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, go and tell your friend, tell your friend, tell them they got to read just what you saw. will do anything to get to the top and they won't even look around don't so good seed on your way up one day you till it comes out you better so good seed so good seed you better so good seed so good seed you gonna reap just what you saw so good seed, so good seed, you got a so good seed, so good seed, you got a reap just what you sow. Be up on the mountain, on the mountain, be down in the valley, in the valley, you got to reap just what Tell your neighbor, tell your neighbor, go and tell your friend, tell your friend, you got to read just what you saw. You can grin in my face and stab me in my back and think that that's all right. But what you do when the dark and day will surely come to light, you better so good see, so good see, you better so good see, so good see, you're gonna read this word you saw on the mountain, on the mountain, down in the valley, in the valley, you're gonna read. So 
good see. So good see. You better so good see. So good see. You better read just what you say. So good see. So good see. You better so good see. So good see. You better read just what. Talk about the moon, that's in my eye, and I can't see the bee, and there's no why. Just slipping and sliding, peeping and hiding, living like you just don't care. You better so good see, so good see. You better so good see, so good see. You're gonna read just one. On the mountain, on the mountain, down in the valley, in the valley, you're gonna read this word you say. This is what I'm talking about. You're gonna read, gonna read, you're 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 gonna read. Talk about me if you want to. You're gonna read, you're gonna read, you're gonna read. What I need you to do. You're gonna read, praise the Lord. You're gonna read, lift up your hands. You're gonna read, praise the Lord. You're gonna read, 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 you're gonna read. Can I get a witness? You're gonna read, you're gonna read, you're gonna read. You can't go about you gonna read doing anything. You gonna read you gonna read you gonna read praise the Lord. You gonna read lift your holy hands. You gonna read thank you, Lord. You gonna read you gonna read you gonna read so good so good see so good see you better so good see so good see you gonna read just what you saw. So good see, so good see, you gonna read just what you There is healing 
in the name of Jesus. There is healing in that name. Jesus. There is healing in the name of Jesus. I call him for 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 Jesus. Early in the morning, for Jesus. I call him for Jesus. In the noon day, for Jesus. I call him for Jesus. Late at midnight, for Jesus. No one's around me.
your throne of mercy. Oh, help me find a sweet David down and raise the Christ up within and you preach with power, with conviction, with fire and authority. And all that you purpose your word to accomplish, we say thank you because we know your word will not return unto you void. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come with me this morning to the collection of writings called the New Testament. We're still in our series of messages dealing with the time frame from the Passion to the Pas uh, Pentecost, from the Passion to Pentecost. So we're in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 1. And it's there I want to shine the sermonic spotlight on verses 21 through verse 26 of the book of Acts chapter 1 you'll find recorded these words. Wherefore, of these men which have companied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph called Barsabbas, 
who was surnamed Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So ends the reading of the word of our Lord. I want to talk to you this morning from this sermonic discourse. What happens when you're not selected? What happens when you're not selected? After the ascension of Jesus, the disciples overcame the temptation to, to live stuck gazing uh, into the glory or at the glory that uh, transported the Savior from time to eternity. Uh, those who witnessed uh, the resurrection and the resurrected Lord decided that it was time to get back to everyday life and to get busy uh, working for the kingdom. If you're taking copious notes uh, this morning, I have two observations from the text uh, that we'll try to lift this morning. The first observation is trust in divine providence. Trust in divine providence. The second observation that we'll raise for you uh, this morning is providence can never be manipulated by human desire. Providence can never be manipulated by human desire. So we want to deal with this first observation this morning as we glean insight uh, from this text. I think it's important for us to first understand what this word providence means. And so providence is divine as the protective care of God. The protective care of God. Also, providence can be defined as timely preparation for future eventualities. Timely preparations for future eventualities. The protective care of God and timely uh, preparation for future eventualities. First on the agenda uh, was filling the void that was left in the disciples or the apostles group when Judas killed himself for portraying our Lord Jesus to the enemies. Judas' death, what it did was it created an opening and God's desire was that the apostolic group would number 12. Uh, this number 12 symbolized the Old Testament tribes of Israel. John in Revelation chapter 21 verse 14 says that the wall of the city had 12 foundations and in them the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. That there was work that needed to be done, Deacon Archie. And before the Holy Spirit came, these disciples, these apostles had uh, to do some work. Uh, this, this infant gathering this spiritual remnant, this small band of believers and, and Acts around chapter 1 verse 15 or so talks about that there were about 120 believers who were gathered in this particular place. We know that Jesus appeared after his resurrection to some 500 witnesses, but now this small band of 120 believers, they, they, they were... They were representatives of the church or the ecclesia or the called out. And so now the church had to position herself in the order that God, uh, 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 in the order of God uh, uh, to prepare for what God was going to do in the next step. So to facilitate this process, Sister Marva, Peter stood up and took principal leadership and authority. It's there in Acts chapter 1, starting with verse 15. He, he takes principal leadership and authority, and he suggested to them that they ought to fill the void immediately. 
So everybody agreed. And then when we get to verse 21, Peter lays out the criteria for apostolic inclusion. Now, I want to say this parenthetically, that Peter lays out the criteria for apostolic inclusion. In other words, Peter lays out what qualifies and quantifies an apostle. So he shares to them, uh, parenthetically, the, the, that one has to have been with us, that's what Peter says, and seen Jesus, and one that has witnessed his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That's what an apostle is. One that has been with us, Peter says, and seen Jesus, and one that has witnessed his death, his burial, and his resurrection. The person had to be somebody who had been with us, Peter says, from the beginning until Jesus was taken from us. So why was that important? It was important because Peter says our witness must include the resurrection. And that leads us to really the second criteria, which is Peter said we need somebody who can tell people more than just Jesus lived and died. That, that, that will not give hope to the people. What, what will give hope to the people is an eyewitness account to the fact that he lived, that he died, and that he was resurrected from the grave. So, so when Peter had finished speaking to his fellow believers, the Bible reveals in the text here that two men, uh, uh, two men now fit that criteria and they were identified. Joseph called Barsabbas and then Matthias. Now the people went through a process and when they finished, uh, Matthias was chosen, uh, Sister Ireland, to become part of the twelve. Uh, uh, that would lead this kingdom project that Jesus had told them before he left uh, to evangelize the world. Now, when Matthias was chosen, you, you, you can, can see with your spiritual eyes that everybody was celebrating. Uh, they were celebrating, they were celebrating, and I admit when I read it, I, I said just like they did, good. Now... Now they can get on with the work of ministry. Now they can get on with fulfilling after the promise of the Holy Spirit that comes next uh, message that we'll share. They can get on with the business of evangelizing the world. So I was excited when I read this. I was excited that now they had 12 apostles that they could carry out the proclamation of the gospel. But in my spirit... My spirit wouldn't let me rest there because I kept thinking, uh, uh, Brother John Brown, not about the one chosen, uh, but Sister Willis, I know you're watching. I, I started thinking about the one that was not chosen. What about Joseph? Brother Price, the man that God did not choose. See, how do you live with the fact that you are not the one chosen? chosen. Let me say that again. How do you live with the fact that you're the one not chosen? And what do you say to a person who was one of only two candidates? Everybody's celebrating with the one chosen while the unchosen one, uh, uh, brother, brother, brother Walker, uh, uh, still there and ask the question, but what about what about me? I, I, I will be honest and with you that I know more Joseph's than I do Matthias's. Uh, the church is full of Joseph's. They're, they're in our family. They, 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 they love the Lord. Uh, but, but things just have not worked out for them like they have for you or for others that they know. Brother Joel, maybe you're a Joseph. Maybe you're saying amen right now because you're wondering why other Christians can be less faithful and more blessed. 
while, while, while you're here, uh, you're trying to be more faithful, they're being less faithful, and they seem to be getting all of the blessings. You, you, you're catching it from every corner, and you're tired of living as the one not selected. And, and the church, uh, if it is to be the church, cannot celebrate with Matthias. We must also minister and embrace the Josephs. Joseph must feel comfortable that it's all right to not be the one chosen, not to get the job, not to make the engagement work, not to have the doors open, not to make the marriage last, or not make decisions that work. We've got to learn to embrace the Josephs. Joseph could have asked, isn't it my turn yet? Like everybody else, I, I've given my time, I've given my talent, I've given my tenure, I've been focused, I've been faithful, and I've been following. What about me? When, when is it my turn to, to, to get some of what I want, to, to have things flow my way, to, to make things successful for me? When, when is it my turn to get a day up front rather than to be in the back? When is it my turn to be selected first and considered valuable? When is it my turn? My dears, we need to minister to the Josephs because at some point, we're all Josephs. We're not picked. We're not selected. We're not included. Uh, we, we, we're the ones without things that go our way. And what makes this kind of rejection so bad when you read the text is that God did it. The one not chosen must acknowledge the fact that God didn't pick me. Hmm. And the lesson is this. We must help people understand that being the one not chosen does not mean I'm a failure or a reject. We need to help people understand that being the one not chosen does not mean that they're a reject or a failure. See, God wants me to celebrate me, not my selection. Because there's a whole lot of folk who are selected who are not ready for what they've been selected to do. So God wants me to celebrate me, not my selection. Both men were presented because they were, look, they were ready. Look at the text. They were ready. Joseph would not have been considered had he not been ready to be chosen. He had all that it took to work with the twelve. He was able to handle the job. He could have been just as good at it. So not being selected did not mean that he was not ready. He was ready. He just wasn't selected. Now, now there are some things that, 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 that I will not be selected for. But I tell you what, I'm ready for. And why, why does this happen? It, it happens because some things are affected by human error. And some things are affected by unclear and cloudy discernment. And then listen, some things, church, if you're watching, listen, God reserves to write to delay even though you're ready. We're talking about trust in divine providence. There are some things you, you're ready for. There are some things you're positioned for. There are some things you, you have all of the prerequisite requires, requirements, but God reserves the right to delay it even though you're ready. So Joseph could leave saying, I didn't get that promotion, but I was ready for it. And that, 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 that's what God wants to teach us. And I believe he wants to develop in our spirits. You see, my getting something does not mean I'm not ready for it. I don't celebrate rejection, but I celebrate readiness. Yeah. I didn't get the job, but I was ready for it. I, I didn't get the promotion, but, but I was ready for it. I, I, I didn't get selected, but I was able and I was ready for it. That's the key in the kingdom, not selection, but readiness. Listen, we used to sing a song, Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give you. I'll do what you say do. Use me, Lord. To show someone the way uh, uh, and enable me to say, my storage is empty, but I'm available to you. Don't, don't, ever, don't ever get drunk 
on the culture, uh, on the culture's need to measure success by selection. See, see, that, that, that's too ori, uh, too results oriented. Don't, don't fall into the culture's need to measure success by selection because that's too results oriented. Your readiness is a sign that you've navigated your life in a way that would have caused others to give up. Yet you're still standing. When others were eliminated, you were still holding on. When others were selected, you were ready for the job. Because selection is not always a sign of success, but readiness is. So, so Joseph was ready, but he just wasn't selected. My second observation, if you're taking copious notes, is providence can never be manipulated by human desire. Providence can never be manipulated, Deacon Harper, by human desire. See, the providence of God is not subject to our desires and our wishes. God does not blindly obey us, but God expects us to, in faith, be obedient to him. See, God is free to choose who he wants, when he wants to. He, he's sovereign. He can do what he wants when he wants, to whomever he wants to. He has the right, because he's God, to select and to not select. Now, this is a hard fact for our human mind and our spirit to process because that means God can choose not to choose me. And you know what? When he does, I I've got to trust that. Yeah, I must remember that in spite of the fact that God may not choose me, God still loves me, Sister Ireland, and takes care of me. So, so how, how do I do that when, when, when God doesn't choose me, but I know God still loves me? Well, here's what we do. We do this by trusting the integrity of the process. See, those, look at the text, those gathered in Jerusalem prayed, that God would search their hearts. Joseph could find encouragement in that because after they prayed, the believers in Acts chapter 1 were still confused about which of the men should be included and which one should not. So look at what the text says. They cast lots. Now, it's interesting because Acts chapter 1, Rick Sims, if you're watching, verse 26, is the only place in the New Testament where you read about the Lord's people casting lots to discern God's will. Another time in Scripture we see this when Jonah was on the ship. When he was fleeing God's promise to go down and preach to the Ninevites, he decided that he was not going to go that way. And so when trouble arose on the ship, they cast lots. So Acts chapter 1 verse 26 is the only place in the New Testament where God's people cast a lot to discern God's will. And in this instance, according to the practice, here's what they did. They got two sticks and they wrote uh, Matthias's name and they inscribed it on one stick and then they inscribed Joseph's name on the other stick. Then they placed the two sticks in a garment called a lap. And then someone shook the garment until one of the sticks fell out. And what the people did was they trusted that God would let only the name of the person chosen to fall out. Our observation is providence can never be manipulated by human desire. God was trusted to release the stick with the name of the one that he wanted to fall out. So when Matthias' name fell out, Joseph didn't complain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't argue. He didn't start confusion. He accepted the Lord's will and he lived on because, listen, he understood divine providence. If there's a hard lesson that the church must teach, here it is. You can pray. You can pay your tithes. You can worship God in spirit and in truth. Yet there will still be times when God will choose to do what you don't want God to do. Sometimes God will not choose you or your desires and wishes 
He won't choose them to accomplish divine will. See, remember, Joseph was already doing what the other disciples was doing. Oh yeah, he was already doing it. He, he, he fit the criteria that Peter had laid out. Joseph was with Jesus from the beginning, talking about from the beginning, his baptism. He had seen Christ in resurrected splendor. He had everything necessary to be called an apostle. But what he did not get, hear me now, what he did not get was the title. He was there. He was present. He met the criteria. The only thing that he did not get was the title. Now, I'm excited about this because I think that if I were there and, and Joseph Barsabbas or Justice, whichever name he might have used to introduce himself, came into my office, came into my office, uh, Brother Archie came into my office and, and started complaining, I would have listened, I would have listened I would have listened, Sister Cynthia. I would have listened to him talk about how qualified he was. Uh, I would listen to him make his argument. I would hear him say, how dare they overlook me? Why did God think I, I couldn't handle the work? And then, this is me, then I would have counseled him this way. Sister Val, Joseph, you're right. You have been working. And you've been witnessing just like the rest of the brothers. You, you, you've seen just what they saw. And you, you know just what they know. So I too, Joseph, I, I, wonder, I wondered why God wouldn't choose you to be an apostle. And then the Lord revealed this to me. Some folk need to be chosen because they need titles in order to do the work. Oh, 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 oh I, I just said something. Let me say it again. Some folk need to be chosen because they need titles in order to do the work. Let, let, let me say that again. Some folk need to be chosen because they need titles in order to do the work. But Joseph, God knew that even if you were not selected to wear the title, that you would still do the work. Come on, somebody shout glory. Even though you don't have the title, you can still do the work. And isn't that true in so many of our churches that, that people, people in our church, you don't need a title uh, to be a good Christian. Don't, don't ever get caught up in thinking that you need to have a title in the church. You, you don't need to be called a missionary in order to witness and show some hospitality to strangers. You don't need to be a trustee to care for the facility. You don't need to be a choir member to sing a new song. You don't need to be a preacher to tell somebody how good the Lord is and, and that God can can save and that God can deliver. You don't have to be a usher to welcome somebody in the house of the Lord. You don't need the title to do the work. I just want to do the work because I know God has made me able. He's made me ready. He's prepared me. So whether or not I have the title, I'm still going to work out my soul salvation I'm still going to work the works of him that sent me while it is day I don't have to, to gain be the one to gain all the glory I don't have to be the one to tell the story not for titles or for status and all I ask Lord is that you just use me just use me the songwriter says I want to live so God can use me anywhere or anytime. I, I want to sing so God can use me anywhere or anytime. I want to pray so God can use me anywhere or anytime. I'm going to walk so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to talk so God can use me anywhere or anytime. So, Lord, I'm available. Say to somebody. Lord, I'm available. Lord, I'm available. Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. Lord, I'm ready. So while you're blessing, 
while you're blessing, while you're moving, just know, Lord, I'm ready. Even me, I'm ready. The prophet said, Lord, hear am I? Send me. I'm, I'm ready. I don't need the title. I, I just got a testimony. I, I don't need the title. I got a testimony. And my testimony is that I once was lost in sin. But Jesus took me in. And then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It, it bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And now I'm ready. I'm ready. And I'm available to do what you want me to do. You don't have to call me doctor. You don't have to call me reverend. You don't have to call me deacon, brother or sister. I'm just ready to do the will of God. Because one of these old days, when Gabriel's going to blow the celestial trumpet, and God's going to put one foot on sea and one foot on dry land. And he's going to come back and call us home to his presence. And I'm going to stand before the throne of God. And he's not going to say reverend. He's not going to say doctor. He's not going to say deacon. He's not going to say president. He's not going to say vice president. But he's going to say well done. My good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Lord, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm trusting in divine providence. And I know that divine providence cannot be manipulated by human desire. Whatever God wants to do in me and through me and for me, it's of his own will that he use me. And any way you use me, Lord, I'll be I'll be satisfied. Perhaps you've been watching today. And perhaps you've been wondering, Lord, while on others thou art calling, don't pass me by. Know that God has not passed you by. He knows that you're still willing to work, even though you don't have the title. Because God can trust you with the work. There might be one who's watching us is not in relationship with God, I invite you right where you are to say, Lord, I'm a sinner and I want to be saved. Come into my heart. I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died on the cross of Calvary for my sin. He was buried and he rose the third day for my salvation. And the promise is that if I enter into relationship with him, that I will be able to be in your presence forever. If you can just say that, Lord, I believe in Jesus. And I receive him into my heart. At that very moment, you will be saved. I invite you to accept Jesus today. As she sings, consider, consider what happens when you're not selected. I hear of showers of blessings Thou art scattering Let some drops now fall on me. Pass me now. Yes, Lord. Oh, gentle Savior. Whilst thou art
standing in front of a camera, sitting on your bed, looking at your phone or computer. But when the Holy Ghost, woo, when the Holy Ghost gets removed, he'll make you cry when ain't nothing sad. He'll make you laugh when ain't nothing funny. He'll make you run when ain't nobody chasing you. Something within. Woo, that Holy Ghost. Next week, in our message, we'll be in chapter 2, the day of Pentecost. What's interesting is that even on our calendar in 2020, the fifth Sunday in this month of May, May the 31st, is labeled as Pentecost. Seven weeks after the resurrection of Christ. Seven weeks, 49 plus 150, that Sunday when he rose from the grave. Rose from the grave and 50 days later. He sends us the promise of the Holy Spirit. I hope you'll join us next week as we've been moving through Passion to Pentecost. Thank you so much for your prayers and your support to our members. We're not going to rush our return back to worship because we want you to continue to be safe. You may have noticed our brothers wearing masks today as they sung it's because they're new to our audience. They have not been a part of our regular uh, taping and Facebook living, so uh, we wanted to make sure that we protect ourselves and uh, 
listen, we're not going to rush this. And uh, we're ready, uh, but we're going to wait on God to give us his marching orders. Uh, we still have a virus. We do not have a vaccine. So we want to be very cautious and deliberate in our choices. I'm serious about shepherding God's people throughout in these 80 days or so of this pandemic. I have not had to visit a member sick with corona. I have not had to bury a member who died from corona. And I don't want to move too fast and rush back in here and, and then have to deal with the heartache of someone contracting and perhaps someone passing. So practice safety, continue to pray, and we'll continue to bring you a fresh word from God. We'll celebrate him in the way in which we become accustomed to. And then when God says it's time, I look forward to the time when I can embrace you and see your face again. But until then, we'll continue to worship this way. Look, if you want to support our ministry, you can do, th do so. Go through our website, www.greaterzionhouston.org, and you can find a link on there to donate. You can donate through Giveify. If you have the Giveify app on your phone, you can go through. It's Greater Zion Baptist Church on Truly, T-R-U-L-L-E-Y. We also have created now a cash app. Uh, you can go uh, to hashtag, that's the dollar sign, Greater Zion Houston, and there you'll find us if you'd like to send your contributions through Cash App. As always, you can mail your contributions to the church, 3202 Truly Avenue, Greater Zion Church, Houston, Texas, 77004. Look, we're glad that we have this opportunity to be with you today. Thank you for those who watched us on Facebook, those who will watch us later on YouTube. God bless you and God keep you. May his face forever shine upon you. God, we thank you for the privilege that you've afforded us for life. We thank you for the privilege of presence. God, we pray that you continue to be merciful unto us. Watch over us and keep us. Let your Holy Spirit overshadow us. Bless us in our downsetting and our uprising, oh God. Keep us safe. Help us to be wise and deliberate. In the decisions that we make, Lord, we pray that you would bless our country, bless our world. Well, Heavenly Father, we know that this not, did not take you by surprise. And so, Lord, we know that you're God and that you're sovereign. And so, God, would you teach us to apply our hearts to wisdom. And teach us, O oh God, to follow you and have a more faith walk and a trusting walk with you. And then, God, those who may be returning back to work and returning back... Uh, to a sense of normalcy, some sense of normalcy, God, would you help them to practice safety? Uh, to be mindful, O oh Heavenly Father, of their obligation to you, to their job, and their obligation to care for their families and their loved ones. Lord, we thank you, and we give you the praise. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken.